OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Hello everyone, I'm Melinda Holt, a Project Specialist for OTAN, the Outreach and Technical Assistance Network, and I'll be your host for this OTAN Tech Talk. The title for this OTT is Become Digital Leaders, OTAN's Digital Leadership Academy and will detail the mission and goals of the Digital Leadership Academy, as well as provide information on how agencies can apply for the two-year project. Our presenter, Netta Anaseri, is a project coordinator at OTAN and oversees the DLAC. Netta, it's all yours. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you, everybody, for joining this OTAN Tech Talk on the Digital Leadership Academy. I'm happy to be presenting for you today. A little bit about OTAN, which I know that you all love um, OTAN services and have been participating in many different um, professional development opportunities. But as you know, OTAN's vision, leading adult education through support for and the effective application of technology. You're, you are looking at a list of training and other courses that OTAN offers from training in person and online to an EL Civics Exchange and training on the Continuous Improvement Plan along with curriculum offers and the learning management system. That is not a limited list of what OTAN does. We do so much more. And of course, if you would like to learn more, you can go to www.otan.us or you can contact support at otan.us. So today's conversation is going to be about our two-year professional development opportunity, which is also known as the Digital Leadership Academy, aka DLAC. We'll talk a little bit about why we chose to do a two-year professional development opportunity, a little bit of history, the application, the project outline, what's involved in those two years, some statistics and the time commitment, along with ideas from past agencies that have participated in the DLAC previously. So um, many, many years ago, we have offered, um, throughout the years, we've offered different um, professional development opportunities, long-term, short-term, and so on. Um, it is very, very much um, difficult to try to execute a project or a plan in just a short period of time. We believe, in two years, the first year being learning about what your agency needs are with a plan in mind of some sort. And then the second year, towards the end of the first year, you're implementing the project. And then the second year is really the opportunity to understand what your project's needs are, some of the feedback pieces um, that your project needs and um, other evaluating uh, factors so that you can execute and sustain your project long-term. So here are some quotes. Behind every great team is a strong culture, great leadership, and passionate, committed people. Absolutely. And I'll talk about that team approach in just a bit. There's no more effective way to empower people than to see each, each person in terms of his or her strengths. And I'll get to that in just a minute. But long-term PD has been identified as um, just kind of linking it to the project management cycle. Think of a project management cycle when you have an idea and then that idea turns into a project and then that project turns into the implementation and then you need some time for feedback and other, other evaluating pieces so that you can actually execute and sustain your project. OTAN has a history of professional development opportunities. As you can see here, we've had the Instructional Technology Assistance Project, also known as ITAP. Um, we've had the Technology Integration Mentor Academy, also known as TMAC. I am a TMAC alum. And then we also have the Online Teaching Academy, also uh, known as, I think it's OT OTAC. So um, these are all uh, academies that OTAN has provided over the years. They have been year-long academies. Um, so these kind of helped us identify that two-year piece, right? These we've, we've known that one-year opportunities have been successful and we've seen a lot of great progress, but what would that second year do for you? So that's kind of what happened. These guys got married and they had a kid and that kiddo is the Digital Leadership Academy and we're very happy to um, share this information with you today. So um, what we do when it comes to DLAC is our, our teams are really all over the all over California. And what I mean by that is that we strategically choose 
geographically diverse agencies throughout the state. Um, we have such a large state and we wanna make sure that we're identifying the needs of each area. Specifically when it comes to addressing the needs of maybe rural areas or areas in the south and the north that might need additional access to ed tech um, and distance blended learning activities. So it's you so we are purposely trying to target the entire state when it comes to professional development and that's who we want to see online. Um, we want to see them accessing all of our all of our tools, all of our resources and all of our academies. So that is in the scoring process of the application, which I'll go into in just a bit. Um, we are very, we pride ourselves in creating digital leaders. We've had successful leaders um, graduate or complete the Digital Leadership Academy and then go on to positions such as, you know, teachers going into administration positions, administrators going into more county level directorship, um, and others that leave maybe education to become more of technology um, gurus and, and uh, leaders as well. It's focused on leadership training because we know that, you know, we need this training for probably the entire agency, but we have about, you know, two to four people that we know can actually lead the effort at the agency. So since we cannot have everybody apply for DLAC at your agency, we want you to at least have a small group of folks that get that leadership training and bring it back to your agency to make things happen and to execute the project that you are interested in developing. With that, we have um, a system to help identify one's strengths within a team. And so that helps um, our digital leaders be able to go back to their agency and lead the efforts, along with team building and other uh, trainings that we offer through this academy that will help uh, the team succeed. During that process, we're building technology skills, along with helping to plan and develop and implement a uh, project around blended learning technology rich uh, programs. It is a competitive application. Many, many show interest. Um, it is a time commitment as well. And as you know, OTAN serves WIOA Title II agencies and has recently been accepting non-WIOA um, agencies as applicants as well. We took our um, we, we could only accept up to 20 participants and that will give us about five to seven agencies. But we recently increased that to 30 participants, which allows us to have a little bit over 10 agencies, which we're very happy to announce. Uh, this also allows us to get outside of that we owe a title to agencies, but we do, um, we do ask that your teams are at least two people, at least two, no more than four because we, again, remember that ge uh, geographically diverse um, piece that I was talking about. We wanna allow for other agencies to access uh, DLAC as well. Um, administrators, if I have administrators on the lot for, for this OTAN Tech Talk, uh, the administrators are encouraged to be on the team. Admins are involved in the application and the project, even if they're not on the team. So we always encourage an administrator to be on that team um, because we could see that the plan it definitely gets a lot more attention and is, and is successful. But at the very least, if we have the administrator nominate the team, the administrator is involved in this professional development and is complete is in the loop for the entire two years. And we might ask them uh, to participate on several different occasions. It is a two year commitment. And this is a big question that everybody asks, what about costs? Well, OTAN invests in DLAC as much as we ask the agency to invest in DLAC. So what that means is OTAN will pay for items such as travel, lodging, um, equipment, um, and it really varies. I mean, we've been online for a little while now. So for the most part, we know that you have headsets and webcams and such, um, but those are some of the pieces that we allow for, as far as costs are concerned to help you join our online meetings. But, um, and then we also, you know, food, lodging, travel, like I said. Now, it takes a different kind of commitment and costs and investment on the agency level. Remember, this is a two-year academy that involves a plan. And in order to, for that plan to be successful, there is a time investment at the agency and there is a cost investment at the agency. That 
can vary. Um, it may be that you need to carve out some time per week for those educators that are involved in DLAC to be able to spend time on making sure that this um, professional development opportunity is allowing them to execute their plans. So that you might be spending time on paying your teachers, um, you might be spending time on additional equipment depending on what that project is, but that is up to the team to discuss with their administrator. That's the key is whoever it is that's applying needs to discuss this with their administrators to be able to understand what the needs are, how much it's going to cost the agency, because there is an equal amount, if not more of an investment on the agency side. Okay, so I talked about that project. It's basically, we are asking you to not only have that idea in place, but really look at your data, look at a gap, look at a need within your learners. Um, we need a project outline, a strong one. Um, so not only are you deciding on the team and who is, who is able to be a part of that team, but you're also looking at what is it that we wanna focus on, right? Um, so a plan and project as a team with the administrator, so the administrator does need to be a part of that discussion. And then we I ask that we have the colleagues and your mentees or mentors to uh, look at um, specific needs around education technology, learning management systems, blended learning, high flex learning, all the buzzwords that are in education right now when it comes to adult learning, um, right? We are transitioning from a, a pandemic and we're moving forward to hopefully some additional online learning opportunities for our adult students. So what does that look like? What do your students need? You might be looking at data through your D data integrity report through TOPS Enterprise and CASAS. You might be looking at your um, federal tables and looking at the needs of your NR through NRS and looking at the educational functioning levels. Are there systems in place? Some people might be looking at attendance practices, registration practices. Um, others might be looking at um, learning gains through testing, um, how to reach additional students um, online. So it is not limited. It doesn't it, we do not control the project. It's really up to the agency to really spend time with their team to identify those needs. Here's a little bit about the expectations and the time commitment for those deliverables. So you look here on the uh, chart on the left, um, there's a year one timeline. So you can see that we ask, um, to come to Sacramento County Office of Education, that's where OTAN lives, and they will come in for uh, training. So your the applications are now open. Um, the applications will close in August, and our first and our cohort will start um, sometime in September. Um, as far as the introductions, you'll know that you've been accepted in September, and then we ask you to come out to those training days in October. So those training days are locked in. Then we have commitments that we ask to for you to be online with us once a month. So it's very it's very important for us to meet on a monthly basis. Um, so we'll have a November meeting, a two hour November meeting, a two hour December meeting, and then we ask you to come back for an in person training in January. More online meetings in February. In March, we hold the distance uh, technology and distance learning symposium. And so you're, everybody in on DLAC is invited to present along with um, not only present, but along with participate in TDLS as well. We ask you to join um, more online meetings. And then we have May training dates for May. Um, sorry, May training dates for the first year. Those May training dates are around um, the mid project. So you've been with us for about a year. And now it's time to, for, us to, for us to know where you are within your project. Sometimes when you apply for DLAC, you have a specific plan in mind. But by May, that has changed. And you might have morphed it into something different and or maybe enhanced enhanced it into something different, and that's okay. Um, but we do ask that you report to us mid-project and let us know how things are going along with your cohort. We have a variety of different online project meetings that happen June, between June and July, and that really all depends on your coaches, and I'll go into the coaching piece in just a minute. You will have coaches assigned uh, to you. 
We have a partnership with World Education and the Ideal Consortium, where we deliver a, a distance learning one-on-one -on -one facilitated course. The World Ed provides us with the facilitator. And that course is really designed about orienting, recruiting students in an online environment and what that looks like. There are so many different benefits from that course that really help, even if your project isn't aligned to necessarily uh, online learning for your students. There's there's so much more to, to it than just that. Regular online meetings with coaches. Uh, I talked a little bit about that technology and distance learning symposium, and there might be some site visits. You can see year two is similar. Um, we don't bring you to Sacramento as much. So in year one, we ask you to come to Sacramento three times. In year two, you are going to be coming in twice um, in October and in May, but it, you will be required to attend online our two hour monthly meetings, as you can see here in orange along with, again, the Technology and Distance Learning Symposium, presenting at the Technology and Distance Learning Symposium, regular online meetings with coaches, another course through, this, uh, through World Education and the Ideal Consortium called um, the Resource Evaluation. So we know that through your, on, for year one, you are working really hard on implementing those projects, um, but you probably gathered and gained a bunch of different resources. And so the DL102 course is designed to um, help you evaluate those resources, help you at your agency evaluate what those resources are going to look like. Participation distance, uh, the technology and distance learning symposium, and then maybe additional site visits if necessary. Everything is managed through our learning management system. As you all know, we were managing a lot of our uh, materials and courses through Moodle, and we've made the transition to Canvas. So our new cohort will be on Canvas. And of course, we model what we ask uh, folks to do at their agencies. So uh, all that coursework will be on a learning management system. In, your, in this case, for DLAC, it will be on Canvas for the next cohort. It's an idea to just really make sure that we have a centralized space for everybody to be able to access the resources. We can communicate with you through um, Canvas. We have um, opportunities for discussions because at this point you are amongst a big cohort, so there's an opportunity to discuss. Um, and then it gives us, uh, allows us a space to calendar uh, specific training days and manage um, a lot of that project uh, space as well. All right, I mentioned coaching. Every agency gets a coach. And why is this important? We know at OTAN that we can provide you with all the resources, but at some point we need additional guidance at an agency or specific team members need additional guidance. So it's important for OTAN to have you that leader for you, that mentor for you, that coach for you. And this coach, um, we have our own internal framework on what uh, our expectations of our coaches. And really they're just there to be your cheerleader, to be there to connect you, to connect the dots for you or connect you to items that OTAN has that might be able to support your project. And outside of OTAN, um, probably utilizing other state leadership projects like CalPRO or CASAS and some of their opportunities that they have. Really the coach is designed to be that link for you, to help you throughout the process for the two years. All of our coaches are experienced adult ed educators, administrators, folks that have been in the field, that are names that you know and love, and, we'll, and I'll share with you in just a minute who those are. Um, it's allowing you to have continuous ongoing support and um, you have us at OTAN, um, project coordinators, myself, who uh, leads the Digital, uh, Digital Leadership Academy, along with all of our staff, um, the folks that you know and love, like Melinda Holt, Marjorie Olavides, and so many more. And then we have outside expertise come in, like our course facilitators through World Education and the Ideal Consortium. Here are some names that you might know. Each agency will have their own coach, and these are our five coaches for our next cohort. We have um, Susan Gare, Susan Coulter, Francisca Wentworth, Blair Roy, and Cindy Waslowski, all very valuable uh, to the OTAN subject matter expert pool who give us a variety of different experience, and um, we just love the areas that they represent from ESL, ABE, ASC, administration, educators in the classroom, and so much more community college experience, um, OTAN experience, and so much more. So we're very, very lucky to have them on board. 
Of course, um, beyond the, addition, the resources that OTAN gives you, we hire leadership experts that help you kind of take that role on, that leadership role on, so that you can go back to your agency knowing how you can lead with this project. And we hire Dr. Paul Porter as our expert consultant. Um, he is there to help us with um, a lot of that time management pieces that we might need additional assistance with. You might, you know, um, receive some, you know, pushback from some of your colleagues, or you might, you know, encounter some issues. So we have sessions on conflict management and how to be yourself a mentor and a coach. All these are sessions that Dr. Uh, Porter provides us with. Dr. Porter is a retired superintendent along with a retired, uh, I believe retired now professor at UC Davis Extension. Um, he has a variety of different experience from K-12 to the community college to the university level. We're very lucky to have him as our consultant. He's been a long time um, uh, consultant for OTN and has been doing a lot of our leadership uh, training as well. In addition to conflict management, time management, and those pieces that I mentioned earlier, we also offer a Gallup's Clifton Strengths Assessment. So OTAN pur purchases those assessments, and then Dr. Porter is our trainer for Gallup Strengths. Um, what Gallup believes is if an individual identifies what their top five strengths are, they can utilize them and understand how their team works. So if we can invest, so OTAN will invest in purchasing that um, assessment for the team, and then they work together to identify what their strengths are so that they can go back to their agency and work with their uh, larger teams at their agency, knowing what their top five strengths are. It's a very interesting training, and it really allows you to, you know, when to start looking at, oh, that really is me. That's a real uh, good reflection of who I am and how I, I like to do things and how I think things. And it just kind of helps you understand how you can use those strengths um, to work with your colleagues, um, even in your personal life, believe it or not. So um, at this time, I'm going to go into the individual uh, projects that we've had over the last several years with our previous DLAC cohorts, um, DLAC 1, uh, is was an was a group of seven agencies. We had about 21 members. It was a mix of northern and southern um, agencies. We had groups of two plus members um, from different a variety of different um, program areas, and I'll go into that in just a minute. And also, we had a good representation of not only K-12 districts, but we also had a good representation of community colleges and nonprofit faith-based programs, um, such as Catholic Charities. Their projects, their projects vary. Um, you know, many of uh, we had some ESL um, teachers that were very interested in utilizing some of those uh, Chrome carts that we've had we had in our classrooms at some point. And so San Mateo was really all about you know taking those uh, carts to the community and utilizing them with their ESL students and providing in, uh, um, enriched um, ESL programs at different community. Um, um, classrooms throughout their area. A very unique um, Baldwin Park team decided uh, that their project was about or was around training and motivating um, uh, individuals on technology and just providing that technology boot camp piece. And they extended that beyond their agency. They actually became their area um, their consortium uh, leaders when it came to came to technology. So many of those teachers that were in our in the cohort then became the consortium ed tech um, kind of consultants. And so that was a very uh, great uh, way to extend your learning. They almost think of it as they had their DLAC with us, but they also took it and became and made it into a DLAC light at their consortia level which yeah, that's exactly what we want to see happen. Um, beyond being a part of DLAC with OTAN, we hope that you can take it at your agency and then make it your own DLAC, uh, of course. Um, there were CTE programs that were focused around um, building a, pro a nursing program on Moodle. Um, there were GED programs that were really all about getting folks trained and ready to take those tests um, from Oakland. And, San Diego Community College District managing their learning management system at that time. For DLAC 2, similar, seven agencies. We had about 21 members as well. 
um, many different student needs. Um, but the unique part about these guys was that they wrapped up their academy in 2020. Yes, right at the heart of um, where everything happened as far as the pandemic is concerned and COVID-19. So they were our trailblazers when it came to distance and blended learning. So they you know, second year into the into the program, they were able to get their agency, their consortiums, their areas ready to um, get their students online. Um, and it also uh, included our a bigger community colleges like LA City College. They were also in this cohort. I'm going to tell you a little bit about their projects. Corona Norco was focused on an ABE bridge class um, that was able to enhance the learning in math and English, and they were able to adapt um, Canvas as their learning management system through their district. El Monte was uh, all about digitizing their ASC materials, so stepping away from some of the resources that were in hand, all their packets, um, but rather using them on a learning management system that they chose to be Moodle. At that time, Escondido was all about Google in the classroom and how to utilize and bridge some of those resources with Canvas as well as uh, Google Classroom for ESL. Unique um, program was Hacienda La Puente, where they came in with three different projects. So they had a representative from ESL, they had a representative from ASC, and they had a representative from CTE, uh, the parenting course. And they wanted to not only have their three different projects for their, for their program areas, but also one project to help train teachers together. So it, in essence, it was almost like four different projects. And that's not doesn't necessarily need to be the case for everybody else interested in uh, DLAC as well. So just to let you know that that's not our expectation, but that's what Hacienda La Puente came forward to want to do. Um, LACCD, LA City College, they digitized their EL Civics co-apps. Mount Diablo uh, created a great system as far as um, accessing all uh, classes, ESL classes using Google Sites. And San Juan was really focused around training teachers on technology, uh, especially in their ESL department. Right now, we have DLAC3, who is all online. <laughs> they are our cohort that we had to uh, primarily just meet online. We haven't met them in person, but we will um, in actually next week. So this is a bigger cohort. 12 agencies were involved. This is when we made that kind of increase. So now we're accepting 30 participants. Um, they, they're also a unique group, right? Because now they've applied and they know the needs after the pandemic and what they um, wanted to do as far as, you know, expanding some resources to students um, that they know that may not be in person. Many of them are very, were interested in accessibility efforts. So when we talk about accessibility, it really is a part of the Americans with Disability Act, ADA, and Section 508 uh, in the law. And uh, they had, it includes county offices of ed, uh, K-12 districts, community colleges. Their projects, uh, which are wrapping up in May of 22, they have built a pharmacy tech bridge course in Canvas. Um, like I said, accessibility teacher training. Um, San Diego Community College uh, included their adults with disabilities department. So we have a team that not only of ESL teachers, but they also included a teacher from um, their adults with disabilities department. Um, Canvas teacher learning onboarding. Uh, many of our agencies have adapted Canvas as their learning management system and they needed to train their teachers and provide resources for them. So some of their projects were geared around that. Technology boot camps, um, online EL civics modules and extending those uh, modules to be able to reach or train teachers to reach more students online. High flex instruction was um, a buzz word that we know and, and we've heard uh, throughout the se several months um, or even years. Uh, so high flex ESL instruction and registration was a focus for one of our agencies, ESL online learner support and digital literacy. 
We're happy to announce that DLAC 4 applications are now open. So you can apply for DLAC 2224. And so by doing that, you are going, going to identify with your administrator. If you're interested, I would suggest go to your administrator and say, hey, I would really you know, love to be a part of this um, cohort and then maybe start the discussion around what that would look like who should be who else should be a part of that uh, cohort maybe you already have a teacher friend that you know that you want um, to be involved in this project you can take that proposal to your administrator and uh, we can work with you on strategies of you know what that would look like how you can approach your administrator with some of those questions or comments or um, if you have concerns that maybe this is something that you're not ready for maybe Maybe there's uh, there's some limits. Well, we can kind of help you think about strategies and ideas of what that could look like. So um, if you're interested, I know that you know this is um, a long-term project, but it is helpful uh, again for a sustained long-term project. Um, this is this is a way to look at it to to make sure that it's sustainable um, for the future. We love um, bragging about our alum, <laughs> so you could see on this, and this is just three out of the very, very many that have been through our program. Uh, Dr. Toy B. Reblitis, um, who nominated her team from Corona Norco, uh, this is last cohort, DLAC uh, 2. Um, she is now Dr. Reblitis, and she was also at in TMAC, um, which is a previous um, uh, professional development opportunity that OTN has provided. Farzana Kasim, who's also been a part of many other um, TMAC as well, and has also been a, a coach and a subject matter expert for us, and is also in an ESL classroom, who used to be an ESL learner and became an ESL teacher, um, which I admire very much. And then Dr. Yesenia Delgado, who also completed her doctorate um, during our the program, during the Digital Leadership Academy, and is now uh, not only used to be an instructor at Hacienda del Puente, but is now a counselor um, in her department and is uh, moving on up. Thank you so much for uh, for listening to me present on the Digital Leadership Academy. I hope you consider applying. If you have any questions, you can reach me at nanaseri at otan.us, and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Melinda? All right, Netta. Wow, lots of good info on DLAC, and it kind of makes me want to apply. <laughs> I'd like to encourage viewers at this time to subscribe to OTAN's YouTube channel where instructional tech videos related to adult education can be found, including OTAN Tech Talks. All of this information and more is available on the OTAN website at www.otan.us. Thank you all for watching this OTAN Tech Talk.